Greetings, this video is going to show you how to use a, a Windows-based computer and a 2GIG updater cable to update the firmware version on a 2GIG panel. The first thing we need to do is, up, is download the update files we need uh, onto our computer. Those can be found at dealer.2gig.com. Now you will need to log in to this website. If you haven't done so, you will need to register. Once you've done, uh, once you've done so, what you'll do is you'll find the firmware update tool link right here underneath support. Go ahead and left click on that. And then what you'll do is we'll bring you to a new page. And here's where we'll find the update toolkit in English, French, and Spanish. Now whichever one you select, that will be the language that's then put on the panel. Um, so I'm going to select English for this demonstration. I'm just going to left click on this blue bar right here that says update toolkit. Now once I've done so, it'll start the the download process onto my computer. It takes anywhere from about 2 to 15 minutes depending on your internet speeds. Now the next thing you'll need to do is need to find the file on your computer. Now I've set mine up to download onto my desktop. A lot of people have their browsers like Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Chrome set up to download their folders to the or download their files to the downloads folder. So that might be a good spot to look for it if you can't find it. Once you've found it, you just want to double left click on it and open it up. Now I have two files. One is the Mac OS X file, which we're going to completely disregard. The other one is the 2GIG B 1.10.1 firmware update tool. Now mine is 1.10.1. That is the most recent version uh, at present. So I'm just going to left click on that and hold it down and just sort of drag that over to my desktop. It's going to ask me to confirm it. I'm going to click yes. Now it's going to start uh, copying the files to that spot and it's going to unzip them or uncompress them. Now while it's doing that, make sure that your cable, your updater cable is not plugged into your computer or the panel and make sure your panel is powered down. Now as you can see, it put a new folder on our desktop. I'm going to close this folder down and as you can tell, this one is zipped up. It's got the little zipper. This one is unzipped or uncompressed and it's nice and open. Just go ahead and double left click on that. Now I've got all the files I need right here. Now I've do, I have the instructions, I have the CDM setup file, uh, this is the file, this is going to be the first one that we run. Uh, I've got the CP file and the TS1 file. Now the process is pretty much identical uh, if you're going to use the CP which is for your Go control panel or the TS1 which is for the secondary keypad. So regardless of which one you're going to use, uh, the steps are pretty much identical. Alright, the first step is to run the setup file. So go ahead and double left click on that. It's going to ask you to confirm it. Go ahead and click on yes. Now it's going to install the drivers which allow the computer to be able to recognize and talk to that cable. Uh, once it's done, um, the installation box will disappear. And then what we're going to do is we need to figure out what COM port that cable, the updater cable is plugged into. The easiest way to do that on Windows 7, just going down to the start menu, uh, left click on that and now I've got my cursor right down here in the search programs and files. Uh, we're just going to type in device space manager. I don't even need to finish it and already at the top I've got device manager up here. You just want to left click on that and it'll bring up device manager. Now I'm going to scroll down to ports. I'm going to left click on the little arrow and see what my USB serial port is and it says COM5. Now if you happen to have multiple COM ports and you're not sure which one your cable is plugged into, just go ahead and unplug your cable and see which one disappears. Um, and then plug it back in to confirm that that's the correct COM port. So mine is COM5. So I just need to remember the number 5 in my case. In your case it could be 2, 3, 4, um, it, you know, it, it could be a lot of different numbers. You just want to remember which one it is. I can then close that down. Now for this demonstration, we're just going to do the control panel. Now again, if I was going to do the secondary keypad, I would do the identical steps, but using this file down here, the TS1 file. But since we're doing the, the control panel, or the Go control panel, I'm going to use this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the CP file. I'm going to scroll down to properties. Uh, excuse me. I'm actually going to go to create shortcut. I apologize. So click on create shortcut. I now have a uh, uh, this new uh, icon and this new file here. I'm then going to right click on that shortcut and that's when we go to properties. 
All right, so in the target field, I want to click right here at the very end. I just want to left click at the very end after the quotation marks. Uh, and I'm just going to hit the space bar, the minus or hyphen, and then I'm going to hit C5 for COM5. And then I'm just going to hit apply and OK. Now you're pretty much done with the setup process. Uh, so I'm just going to double left click on the shortcut. It's going to ask me if I want to run it. I do. And now I've got the pinging no panel screen. Uh, so it says pinging right here, no panel. I can see up here it starts with CP, which means control panel. I'm going to update the control panel. So I, everything is good. So the next step is I need to plug the cable into my panel. Now you do want to make sure that you plug the, the updater cable into the four pin spot on the panel. Uh, some pa some of the older versions of our panel have a five pin spot as well. You want to make sure you definitely have it plugged into the four pin spot. Uh, it'll be right next to where the GSM is at. Once you've done that, the next step you'll want to do is you'll want to let me just make sure I'm I've got mine set up. The next thing you want to do is power up your panel. Um, I just plug in the backup battery first, and then I apply power. And as soon as I do so, it'll bring up a new dialog box on my computer. And it's asking me to verify that I want to flash the panel. And I do, so I'm going to click Yes. And now the flashing process will start. Uh, and it's got an indication bar uh, right here that'll let you know your progress. Now it usually takes around six minutes uh, to complete this process. So we're going to fast forward uh, for those six minutes. Alright, now we fast forwarded six minutes. By now your panel has uh, should have powered up, or at least it should be close. Um, right now it says perform delay after flashing, so it's actually already been flashed. Um, it'll quickly say pass in uh, green it'll have a green background anyway and then go back to the pinging no panel screen and it'll be ready to basically flash another panel if you need to now with the current panel what you'll want to do is just power it down and unplug the updater cable and then power it back up it's ready to go uh, it's now for me anyway 1.10.1 1 .1. uh, now if you are flashing another panel you don't need to do a lot of the setup we've already done uh, all we need to do is let me just close all this so we can just go back to our file go to that shortcut double left click on it click on run and now it's ready to go again now if I had a second panel all I would need to do is just plug the cable into the four pin spot and power up the panel and it'll start flashing another panel so as you can tell a large portion of the uh, the time it takes to get this ready is just the initial setup portion uh, after that it's very very easy to flash uh, to flash a panel to a, another firmware if you need to and again the TS1 is the exact same process uh, I'll do that real quick I'm just going to right click on that create a shortcut of the TS1 on my shortcut I'm just going to go to properties add my space minus C5 because that's what my COM port was hit apply and OK and now my TS1 is ready to go. So if I need to do a, a firmware version, a firmware update on a TS1, like I say, it's almost the exact same process. Uh, now what I would do is I would just plug the cable directly into my TS1. There's a four pin, uh, a female four pin end. So you need to make sure you have the male adapter on the end of the TS on the uh, end of the updater cable. Uh, if you need kind of a diagram of what that looks like or where that's plugged in, um, you can find that on our update instructions. Uh, as you can see, this is the male adapter pin for the TS1. That's where you plug it on the Go Control panel. And then on the TS1, this is where you'll plug it in at. So if you need a little bit more assistance, you can find it there. Uh, you can always call your uh, either 2 gig tech support or your company's technical support line. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.